All right, what's up guys? I haven't seen a video of the fuel pressure regulator being replaced on YouTube for the E34 525i M50 engine. So I'm gonna make a video for it. So let's get right into it. So I'm guessing you already have the intake manifold out because it's gonna be a hell of a lot easier doing it that way. As long as you have all the things off, you have access to the fuel pressure regulator right here. I'm pretty sure mine is bad because this tube, I believe, is just supposed to have air, but the hose that I had, when I took the hose off, fuel came out. So I think that means that this thing is bad. Let's start taking it off. Sorry about the audio before, I had a fan on. So I took these pliers and I bent the ends so it'll be easier to get the C-clip off. So you just put them into each of the holes of the C-clip. You squeeze, it's gonna take a second. All right. There's your C-clip. So sometimes these things are just supposed to pop out easily. If you compare it to the new one that I got, it's just a tube with like a flat part. So it should just come out easily, but I'm having trouble. For some reason, this doesn't want to come out. All right. It doesn't matter if I ruin it at this point. Oh, Jesus, mine was stuck in there, dude. So it just does pop out. Um, sometimes you could see a crack on the diaphragm, but I don't see one. My guess is it's messed up on the inside. So clean this up a little. And the new one should pop right in with a little bit of force. So I'm gonna use this thing that I have in my garage to kind of clamp it in slowly. Hopefully nothing gets damaged. Okay, it's going. And I think that's in. All right, now that we have the new one in, let's rotate it accordingly. My biggest advice is to try to save your fuel pressure regulator hose, the one that connects to the intake. This thing alone costs like $60. This part from Bosch was $24, which is way better than uh, the way more expensive version. So, looks pretty good. I actually have to cut off about an inch from this hose because it was actually tearing on one side, but luckily it's still long enough. So that's set. Or actually not yet. Let's um carefully take this out first. Okay. That C-clip is in, this regulator is in. Connect the hose again. All right, that's ready to get put back into the car. All right, so everything is plugged back in correctly, hopefully, so let's start it up. Let's warm up the engine and let's see if the fuel delivery problems are solved. If not, then you'll probably see another tutorial for a fuel pump fix. All right. Okay. It actually started up much more normal. That little chugging in the beginning was because obviously there was no fuel in the rail anymore. So I had to kind of uh, pump the fuel up. All right, so guys, the car started bogging again it was smoother in the beginning though this time but now as you give it gas it starts losing power it just starts going like vroom 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 it starts like really idling real low at like 500. i still believe it's a fuel delivery problem i think i'm gonna check out the fuel pump but yeah that's how you switch out the fuel pressure regulator now we are testing for fuel pressure we got this fuel pressure gauge and vacuum uh, gauge leave that there so we can see inside the car have it tapped into the beginning of the fuel rail. This is uh, the system for now. Let's check the fuel pressure. Let's see what happens to the fuel pressure. Okay, so we got three PSI. Oh, and my engine is doing the weird thing again. That looks like a fuel problem. So the fuel pump relay is on the passenger side fuse box, or I mean, it's not really a, I guess it's a fuse box. Uh, there are four Phillips head screws that don't fall out. Very pleasant design. But what you're gonna look for is the one labeled 255. That's the one right over there, I believe. So we got the fuel pump relay out. We are gonna test how it works or if it does work. So basically what this little diagram means is that 85 is powering 86 that's the main battery line so 85 is a positive 86 is negative and when that receives power it will connect this line up here the one that has a little slant like a little break in it so that means if 85 and 86 is powered then 30 to 87 will receive power and it will continue through otherwise it's constantly broken so the way you test that is 
getting yourself a 12 volt battery. I'm using a car battery in this case. It's like an old one, so and you need a multimeter. A multimeter helps, but you I've seen people do it without it. I'm gonna go ahead and identify which numbers are where. On the bottom here, there are numbers indicating what each of these pins are. So 85 is positive. Let's connect to that. I'm using some alligator clips. They're, uh, they will work just fine. And 86 is the negative. Now the first thing you can test is basically hooking this up to the battery. And if, it, if you hear a click come from the relay, that means it's basically functioning, but it's better to use a multimeter. Put the red on positive. Let's listen for a click. So this thing is clicking. Now, a better way to test it is using a multimeter. Now on this, there's this one symbol. There's a little red symbol with like a, looks like a Wi-Fi signal. Um, I'm gonna switch to that. Basically what happens when you connect the power, the multimeter will make a weird tone, which means the connection is working. So let's connect one to one of them and the other to the other. It doesn't really matter which one. Okay, so let's leave that right there. We're gonna do the same exact thing with this. We're gonna listen for a tone. So you hear the click and the tone. So this relay is working to my knowledge. Uh, I'm not gonna replace this. I guess my problem lies in the fuel pump or some fuel hoses. Um, I should have checked the fuse first, but that's all right. So. We're gonna look for the fuel pump fuse. 23, so these are, wow, these are nicely labeled. So let's use the same clip. Let's grab at 23. Uh, how am I supposed to tell? Wait, these aren't clear. Why can't I tell? The fuse looks all right. I compared it to another one and they look the same. It's not burnt out, it's not melted. Seems like it's just fine. So I think that brings me down to the fuel pump. Yeah, so we're gonna go check that, I guess. All right, guys, we are in the trunk of the car. I removed this upper carpet padding layer. That is the fuel pump access cap. So we're gonna start taking it off. Let's get these five Phillips screws out. Oh my God, this, it's so rusty. Dude, terrible, oh my God. Dude, it's so rusty. There's, oh, look at this. That's rust. That is like rust flakes all around it. Oh no, that is all of it. I'm gonna run this back inside real quick. All right, I should have done this first, but I don't want any of the rust flakes falling in. Yeah, there's some crud under the fuel filter. And now we are gonna test if the fuel pump works. It does work. Okay, I should have planned for that. I should have planned for that. Okay, well, we know that it works, which is hmm, actually odd. It's another day to get the gas lines out. We got the car on jacks and ramps. I'm probably gonna have to take this wheel out since the fuel lines come out right behind here and it would make it a hell of a lot easier. So what do you know, guys? I'm pretty sure this is a spacer. My car already has spacers on the wheels. Usually stock, this is like way more in but this is actually like really perfect um but in the process of trying to loosen the bolts um they were so tight on i ended up stripping my half inch to three eighth inch adapter socket so i just ordered two more so that should be coming now we can start looking at the fuel hose i don't think you can really see but back there the metal fuel line begins and it is oh my god dude it is so rusty i'm just touching it and it's actually falling apart We are under the car, and look at the condition of these fuel lines. They are very, very flaky. And look at this. Yep, that's a completely rusted through disconnected fuel line. I don't know if that is the return line. Let's see. Um, yes, that is the return line. That makes sense. So basically that right there, that screw is uh, pretty much rusted shut and uh, the little Phillips head is uh, starting to strip a little. So I don't know how I'm supposed to get that out. I've already ordered new hoses. They'll be coming at the end of the week. 
this right here is the main fault it seems like for everything that must have been why I had like little to no fuel pressure I I can't I couldn't believe that that was broken like that since I got the car because I was able to drive on the highway just fine maybe I was leaking gas without even realizing I don't believe it though this must have been really recent just very recently fell off and uh, stopped working so I won't be able to get these fuel lines out but I think I'm just gonna leave them and I'm just gonna zip tie the new fuel hose to these fuel lines because it's a uh, rubber nylon braided so now I'm gonna use these fittings 6AN fittings I'm gonna make a little bit of a, a conversion to a male metal prong so I can connect it to a rubber fuel hose that will then connect to the metal so there's two spots I need to do that All right, so I had to fix every single hose fitting the connector pieces because I watched the wrong YouTube tutorial where they showed me how to do it wrong. So basically, I fixed all five of them. Now, we start her up and check for any leaks because there's probably going to be a leak. All right, checking for leaks. No? Huh. There's no, there's no leaks. What? That can't be right. There's no way. What do you know? The right way of doing the pipe fittings actually fixed it all. Man, these pipe fittings are great. That's dry. That looks dry down there. Shoot. All right, I think I'm gonna zip tie all the hoses to, uh, to the car and then maybe get some gas. And the car? Car works. That's a relief. I think this video is already way too long. It took me forever to figure out that fuel system. Look how dirty the driveway is now. Those are all gas puddles, and that's like dirt that collected from the gas puddles. Anyway, I'm gonna clean this up. We're gonna end the video right there. So, thanks for watching. Hopefully, you learned a thing about replacing the fuel system. Uh, yeah, that's a ton of work. At least now I know what to do next time, but. The problem solved, so I will see you guys in the next video.